Hello and thanks for coming by the Trains Lover channel. Today we are looking at LCC and I've titled this video provocatively What's the big deal with LCC? There was a number of videos put up recently about LCC and I think that it's gaining some momentum and I thought maybe it would be good to uh, push that forward. The feature you're going to see is going to be available in the future and the way I have it is because I've built my own custom command station and, and uh, put code on it that will support this feature. I also have a, a TCS uh, UWT100 throttle that supports LCC and it's the only throttle on the market today that has it and hopefully we'll have uh, more of these throttles supporting the LCC protocol in the future or LCC standard. So let's just take a look at what I have here on the bench and then we can go uh, from there. This is the custom command station that I mentioned. It's just a, a Tiva board that runs the open LCB code. Then we have a ESP32 uh, uh, LCC hub, which connects uh, the throttle via Wi-Fi uh, to the rest of the network. And, and the throttle itself is a node, and you'll see it in the JMRI. And so we have a, just a simple booster here, L298. Uh, this is a custom rail com board. It just provides power right now to all these tracks. We don't really use the features that it has, the rail com detection and block occupancy at this moment. Uh, and we have a CAN interface, which is basically what connects these nodes to the rest of the LCC network. I also have a JMRI running on my desktop and it's connected through the other circuits, uh, LCC buffer USB. So that's basically the setup we are having here. Um, we have three tracks here. Um, I'm sorry, it's N scale. That's what I'm modeling right now in. So it might be too small for you to see, but you will be able to at least see the locomotives move. So we have a PRR um, RS11, road number 8618 on track one. We have a Rio Grande uh, GP9, road number 5903. And we have a BN uh, GP15, road number 1391 on track three. So these will be the locomotives that we're going to uh, uh, work on today. And hopefully you see them in the in the tracks here. Additionally to, to that, we have the JMRI and uh, you can see the nodes that I have in the JMRI right now to give you a bit more context of what you're seeing on the screen of the JMRI network tree. You're seeing all the nodes that are connected on the LCC network. You're also seeing my throttle. The reason you're seeing my throttle is because this throttle is connected to the command station via the LCC protocol and you can see that in the upper right corner of the throttle screen. The hub itself is providing the functionality and gatewaying all the packets from the throttle through the Wi-Fi and then through the LCC or through the CAN bus basically to the command station. From the JMRI's window you can actually configure the throttle uh, just as you would is, is if you were holding it in your hand the same features or most of the features are available there just like any other node. Moving along presently if you want to assign uh, your uh, locomotive to the throttle you would key in the road number of that locomotive and then run it on your layout as you would normally. With LCC, uh, things are a bit changed because now you can manage your uh, locomotive database from the command station. And that's the feature that I was quite excited to see in, in real life working and I want to share with you. So let's just take a look at the command station uh, settings himself. I'll open up the dialog for that and uh, we're going to... Uh, just uh, adjust the window here so it fits uh, the screen. Um, so without going into any of the other settings here, we'll, we are going to focus here on the single train configuration. And you see here that you can enter the address. So let's just uh, enter the address of the, the first locomotive on the track one, which is the PRR RS11. Road number was 8618. And we can say, well, that's a DCC 128 step uh, decoder inside. And let's just call this PRR 
RS11 and we'll write all these things back to the station. And now when you look back in the network window, you'll see that the locomotive has actually shown up as a node. And that is one of those things that LCC brings to the table. You will have your locomotives in a database and they will be nodes. You'll be able to manage these nodes just like you would manage your um, other nodes on your LCC network. So let's just go back to the bench now and, and move the locomotive and I'll show you what's, what's, what really is the big deal here. So if you look at your throttle, you see right now we have nothing assigned. Okay, there we go. And the throttle has the key uh, that you can query the locomotives or, or basically enter your road numbers in there. The big deal here is if I press this key, this locomotive will appear in the screen. It wasn't on the throttle before. I'll just go out of it and you see that there is nothing assigned. It's empty and there is nothing in the recall. So this locomotive is actually coming from the train database and I'll just select it. And now we have control over the locomotive and we can move it on the track. And you see it's moving and it's fairly uh, responsive. There is no lag from this. Um, communication between the Wi-Fi troll, but you've seen that anyways with the VTROL protocol itself. So the next thing would be to add the other two locomotives that you've seen on the tracks and we can do that again through the command station's uh, configuration window um, and let's just add the GP9, which is the Rio Grande, oops, that's the 5903-128 Rio Grande GP9, and we'll write this back to the station, and the track 3 one was uh, 1391, again 128, that was a BN GP15, we'll write those as well. And now if you see in the network window, the other two locomotives have appeared as well. And so if you call up the screen with the locomotive settings from the network, you would see something like this. This is not necessarily what you would always see. I mean, what you're seeing right now is just what the developers have set up um, and you really have control all over the functions of that uh, locomotive and you can in the future most likely be able to uh, program the CVs directly from this window. It might be a feature that that's some, they're going to be implemented into the system itself, whatever command station you're running. Let's just go back and take a look at the other two locomotives now on the track and you'll see that if I now uh, go back and uh, call up these locomotives they will all appear in the list. Now imagine if you had a nice fleet of 50 of these you could all see them here in the list and manage uh, uh, sorry not manage but actually uh, select any of them and then you know be able to control them on your layout just with the press of a button. They would be in the database pre-configured and you know you can consist the locomotives from the throttle and you can probably consist them eventually from the command station. Uh, let's just move the GP15 as well. So you can see that uh, the whole big deal about this is that on large layouts uh, people will be able to bring their own throttles and if they have a compatible throttle and compatible command station, LCC compatible, all, all they would have to do is just call this database up on their throttle and select whatever is available on that layout. That sort of brings a new dimension to uh, how things are done and, and you know already that you know some layouts through a, a vTroTL protocol allow you to bring your own um, device or bring your own throttle to any layout. But this is taking it one step further where the locomotives that are available in the fleet are going to be saved and 
you'll be able to call them up whenever you need to. I hope you like this tech demo you've just seen. This is just one feature that is part of the LCC and OpenLCP standard itself. There are more that are inside OpenLCB that are really not inside LCC yet. And NMRA will hopefully adopt those other standards as time goes and more and more manufacturers come on board with the LCC and produce hardware for it. I would argue that this will actually go one step further. Most of us use Decoder Pro for managing our locomotive rosters and programming the locomotives and whatnot. Imagine if you could just click a button and transfer that locomotive settings from your Decoder Pro roster into the command station and basically appearing in the nodes of your network and on your throttles. That alone is, is a big deal. You won't have to worry about multiple locations where you would manage your locomotives or or anything else, any guests to your layout will be able to call up your entire roster or whatever you have prepared for that operating session, if you run operating sessions on your layout instantaneously. Finally, it's worth mentioning again that I've used custom hardware to demonstrate this feature to you. As you can see on my bench, they're just wires. This is not a commercial product that you can buy. You have to put it together yourself and there is hardware and software troubleshooting involved, so as they say, it's not for the faint of heart. There is an alternative to this wire mess on my bench. A project is underway on GitHub to build an ESP32 based LCC capable command station. This command station has a booster, a programming track, a CAN interface to the LCC network, even a railcom detection on the main. If you have the electronics and programming knowledge, you can go to the project page and download all the necessary details and build one yourself. I also believe that developer is working towards selling pre-populated boards for those who don't have the skill to do any electronics. So it's something to consider if you wish to have a LCC capable command station right now. That's all for this video. LCC is an interesting subject and I might make more videos in the future. Until then, Thanks for watching and keep railroading.